When the Genesis was first introduced, it was part of the Hyundai line. But since 2015, Genesis became its own brand, sold in select Hyundai dealerships kind of off to the side. But these beautiful cars still run into problems, just like everything else. This Genesis G70 had its windshield replaced, which means we've got to calibrate the camera. We're going to show you that next. Let's go ahead and get our VCI hooked up and get into diagnostics with our ADOS link. Let's go ahead and get into diagnostics. Auto ID. Our ADOS link will get the VIN for us. And right here, 2022 Genesis G70. You do get a warning that says, notice there is a gateway module on this vehicle for security purposes, but the ADOS link can unlock it. Just like any other time that you are doing any type of ADOS work, it's always important to do a pre-scan. So we'll go into read DTCs. I wanna make sure there's no DTCs related to the windshield being removed or the camera being disturbed. I'm gonna select all. I'm gonna select pre-scan and we'll press continue. The ADOS link does save these reports that you can print out or email to your customer and for your own records as well. There's only 225 modules. This will be over in no time at all. <laughs> so we just finished checking for DTCs. I don't have any related or any issues with them removing the camera. So everything looks good. And it saved a copy of that to our pre-scan. We're gonna back out of that and go right into the ADOS calibration. We're gonna go step by step on this and show you how to do this as well. This is a two part process. You're gonna have a far and a near calibration distance required. We have two options available, front facing camera and the radar. Let's go ahead and get into the camera. We can see that our ADOS link did unlock that secure gateway, so we can press continue. So you can see everything you need is shown right on the ADOS link. So we're gonna need our DOS 3000 rack, a very unique target set, front bumper guard, and of course our wheel clamps. And we're gonna walk it step by step. Calibration preconditions, we got our key on, parking brake is set, and of course our headlights are off. Also don't forget, check your air pressure. If you have any concerns about an alignment, it should be done pre ADOS calibrations. Make sure there's no unnecessary weight in the car as well. All of those things are very important. Good lighting, level ground, all of those things are very important. So two target positions are required for proper calibration. Like I said, a far and a near, and we're gonna go step by step now. Remember when you need to do a calibration, it's because the camera was replaced or something happened, a DTC is present, something like that. But we had our windshield replaced and the camera was actually removed. So you've got to go ahead and calibrate it again. And we're going to do it on a level surface. Um, and it tells you right here what I just said, correct tire size, air pressures, fuel tank uh, full, unnecessary cargo, get it out of there and make sure no other objects are in the way. Make sure you have a lot of area around you to do this. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with our guided tour summary. Let's go ahead and install our center guide pin. On the DOS 3000 rack, you have two sets of numbers on each side. And according to the ADOS link, I need to set that to 134.5. There is also a level on this crossbar, so make sure it's level. It is very, very important on a Genesis or a Hyundai or a Kia for that model, because these procedures are the same for all three car lines, that everything is level. They don't have a lot of variation that they like for your board target to be set up by. It's gotta be, it's gotta be right on. So we've got it set to 134.5. It says make sure that it's level, which we just did while I was over there. And we'll install our target board in the center position.
Attach it right to the crossbar. And lock it into place. And make sure your board is at the zero position. Your crossbar does have a number on it as well. You can see it's right on zeros. Like I said, they are very, very picky about how much variance you're allowed to have with these targets or it won't calibrate. It's gonna ask me to hook up our cameras. And this will be the first distance of required 100 millimeters. Cameras are connected now. We'll press continue. Now it's gonna ask us to put on our wheel clamps with the targets. Make sure you level it out when you place these on the wheel. There is a bubble indicator on the top of these. And also make sure your target board is straight up, up and down. You've seen in the past that sometimes we do these on the front wheels or sometimes even staggered but this one's asking us to do them just on the rear wheels. So we've got those set up. Let's go ahead and see what they ask us to do next. You can see the targets clearly on the screen. That's what you want, that's good lighting. If it can't see those target boards, you're gonna have a problem. So we're gonna go ahead and it says, roll the whole unit towards the front of the vehicle using your bumper guard. The contact plate's already set up on ours. You're gonna gently just kind of kiss the bumper right in the center too. Use that Genesis emblem as your, as your center point. Gently, don't want to scratch the cars. And we'll press continue. Now we're going to get it just in the position that it wants. Sometimes the hardest part about doing these calibrations is just getting it just perfectly right. Got it where I want it to, I'm gonna press continue. Well, I already did that. <laughs> it tells us to lock it in place. I already did that. All right, so now we're gonna make sure our tilting lever is a two and then make sure it's level. Like I said, very, very important on this vehicle. So use your bubble level that's right here. Make sure this board is straight up and down. I like it there, looks good. We'll go ahead and press continue. Remove the scan tool from the platform and take away your, disconnect your USB and then step away from the calibration area. I'm not on camera guys, but you can, uh, you can still hear me. I'll press continue. Calibration is in progress, please wait. Remember I said this is a two part process. So we're gonna do the close one obviously right now and it was successfully completed. So we had everything set up the way it was supposed to be. So, so we're gonna press continue now to proceed with the far target calibration. I'm gonna walk back into the calibration area again so you can see what's going on next. We'll press continue. And it actually is kind of confusing. It walks us through all of the same steps we just did. Um, so you'll see that it says, hey, make sure your crossbar is at 134.5, all of that. We, so it's kind of odd, but it'll get, it will get there. We'll get there. So all of the setup we just did, it shows us again, but we don't really, we've already done it. So the distance this time is 1200 millimeters. We were a hundred before. And it's just going through all of the process again, making sure the cameras are good, that the targets are, able to be seen. 
Now we're gonna back this up, take my brakes off, and we're coming back now. Okay, we're in target. Let's go ahead and press, well, I lied. Must have had a minor earthquake. Continue. Lock it, I already did. Ask us to do all of this again. Now this part is important to check again because we did come back a little bit and you know, your floor might not be perfectly level or maybe there was a little bit of a change in the flooring when you moved it back. So I actually do need to adjust this a little bit more to get this perfectly level. So we'll press continue. We've already done this. We've already done this as well. We already have our target board still in position and we're gonna go ahead, disconnect the cameras and step away from the calibration area. So don't worry, you might not be able to see me, but I'm still here. Press continue. Turn the ignition switch off, okay? Hey, didn't it just tell me to leave the calibration area? But now, turn it off and press continue. It's gonna ask you to wait for 10 seconds. At the end of that 10 seconds, you're gonna have to turn the key back on. Press continue. And the calibration is successfully completed. If this was incorrectly done, you would not have even been able to get to the screen where it says cycle the ignition. That's a good giveaway that you've got your board positions correct. If you don't, it's gonna kick you out and say, we're gonna have to start all over. But this one is successful and it did save a copy of that to the ADOS link that I can provide to the customer. And you can see, we're back at our home screen after a successful calibration. Of course, after every successful calibration, make sure you do a post scan as well to make sure you didn't trigger any DTCs that may need addressed. And of course, lastly, test drive the vehicle. Make sure that lane departure system is working as intended, that it's seeing signs, that it's seeing lines, and that it works as intended for the customer before you give it back to them. For more ADOS procedures and different vehicles, make sure you check out the Hunter YouTube learning page where you'll see my friendly face and a lot of ADOS procedures that you can learn how to do in your shop as well. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys again soon.